Hello and welcome to this episode of Essex by the Sea. I am Owen Ward, exploring the Essex coast, finding out about the amazing and interesting stories it has to offer. Don't forget, Essex by the Sea is now available on your smart speakers. Just set it to play Essex by the Sea podcast. Now, if you've taken a trip on the Tilbury Ferry recently, you'll have passed through a walkway, one that has historical significance to the black community here in not only just in Essex, but to Britain as a whole. To explain more and to tell me about an art installation that's on the walkway at the moment, I'm joined by artist Eve Wright. Thanks very much for joining me on Essex by the Sea. Hi, Owen. How are you doing? Good, Hi. thank Hi. you. Thanks very much. Now, let's start at the beginning, uh, if, if we can. And, and, and some listeners may have heard of the Windrush, but, but may not necessarily know what it was and the significance of it. Uh, can you just sort of give us a little bit of a history yeah. lesson, first of all, if that's okay? Yeah, yeah, happy to. I mean, if you think about 1948, it was quite a significant time for UK history uh, because that marked the point in time where the with the arrival of the Empire Windrush, which was um, it was a pretty, it was I think it was a German boat, what was um, commandeered, and um, it had travelled to the Caribbean, um, I think to the Far East, I believe. Um, Joanna Lumley's parents uh, emigrated or made made a trip on that boat mm-hmm. towards to the actual um, to the Far East, and on the way back, it put out a call to the Caribbean. It went through um, Barbados and Jamaica and uh, Trinidad, all the Caribbean countries essentially. And um, at that point in time, Britain was in, it was it was post war, so they were calling out to the Commonwealth to for help basically to rebuild the country which was devastated after the war there was uh you know they wanted to start the nhs there was or the start nhs has just begun it was the beginning of the the start the start of the nhs um you know there was very much a a labor shortage um I, i won't say it's similar to 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 current times but it was far worse and so it made a call to to commonwealth and um so a lot of the, the the citizens who fought in the war actually decided to come back. And that's the boat that they chose. That was the boat that was literally available at the time, the Windrush. And that's the boat that in 1948 turned up at Tilbury. And that boat was, um, that ship was basically the, the first mass immigration of citizens from the, from the Commonwealth that landed in the UK. So it was, uh, it was very significant. So that boat became, or I say ship, became a symbol of that sort of post-war influx of citizens. I call them people are immigrants, but I say citizens from the, from the Commonwealth. So it was quite significant. And, and we marked that, that, that point in time every year on the 22nd of June for Windrush Day. So there's actually a day where we, we do celebrate that time. For me as a, a Black British artist, it was um, it resonates because that's that's how I came to be here, um, my brothers and sisters, and my whole existence as a you know a British as British Englishman, in a sense that's that's the beginning of me as an artist. But on that boat, when when those citizens arrived, they carried not only their culture, they carried music, they carried you know um, hope dreams, aspirations. So it was almost like, um, you know, to us as a community, to the British, to our wider community, in terms of the community of Britishness and British citizenship, it, it changed all our lives. You know, so it wasn't just a, it didn't just affect one small aspect of British society. That boat became a symbol of because obviously other boats came after that, other ships arrived after that uh, Empire Windrush arrived, but that that ship became it, it was a symbol, but it actually sparked a whole massive change in British cultural life. And as you say, it, it wasn't just people that that ship 
brought. It was the the the, the way of life, the culture, the music, uh, the the clothing, um, uh, the the community as well from the Caribbean. I, I guess for the people who were on that boat, um, it must have been quite mixed emotions leaving home and and setting off across the seas to to make a new home in a in a foreign country whose culture was very different. As you say, it was uh, the country at the time would have been in in uh, sort of a, a state of, of rebuilding and needing help. So there must have been, I would imagine, a, a, a lot of, of mixed emotions from the people that were that were arriving in Tilbury at that time. Of course. I mean, what's quite interesting, what I'm introducing to you is the 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 walkway, which is the walkway was one of the one of the walkways which was used by those by the, those passengers who arrived uh, to transfer, you know, I call it the transition point where they, they left the boat, they transitioned into Britain, and then they took the transportation to all different communities all over Britain from Leeds, Birmingham, Essex, London. So from, from the, it was the first wave said, essentially those passengers, they were dressed in their finest, mm. You know, if you take a trip along, go to Tilbury Walkway of Memory, you'll see the the way those those individuals were dressed. They were dressed in summer. It was, it was summer, so dressed in their summer best. Um, the the men were dressed in their custom made suits. They were young. You know, they were in their twenties. So they got on that ship, coming back to the motherland. They had fought in the war. Some people, and they were coming back to help rebuild the, because if you can imagine at that point in time, you know, Queen Elizabeth and her husband toured the Caribbean shortly before the Windrush arrived, or I think shortly after, I think it's shortly before. So there was this mentality within the Caribbean that Britain was the motherland. This Britain was the place where the streets were paved with gold, where they had to come and rebuild. So, so I could always, when I, when I think about the individuals, I think about their, the light in their eyes, the the smiles, the aspirations, the the sort of like what they gonna um, you know what this Britain they've always was told you know they've seen in their history books and their in their school books what this Britain was like you know so it, in a sense what I love about those the sort of the, the some of the footage and some of the past eight um, images that you see on Tilbury the Walkway of Memory is that you see that you see that kind of excitement you can almost feel it if i can describe the bridge to you Owen. yeah the bridge itself uh, for if uh, people who perhaps haven't visited i have uh, a couple of weeks ago i i happened to be in tilbury and i, I took a look it's uh, 55 meters long isn't it and there's 432 yeah. panels of glass uh, yes. that, that make up this walkway and the artwork is predominantly on that glass work isn't it that's right so the bridge is actually it's very rare because the bridge is actually how it's in the current state of how it was when the passengers arrived. It has not, it still has the same coats of paint on it. It's a bit dilapidated, a bit broken down, almost a kind of um, metaphor to how Britain was at the time. You know, it was broken. And so I, I've somehow integrated those images on the panes of glass. So when you walk across the bridge, I wanted the audiences to be able to get a feel and get a kind of sense of how those passengers may have felt, you know, when they arrived. And, and so I was, so it's almost, I didn't want to interrupt the, the sort of like condition of the bridge. I didn't want it went to be polished or painted. I feel as though I wanted the, the, the images to almost, as I call it, the walkway of memory in the sense that images almost become part of the bridge. And so they almost sink into the, they sink into the structure. And um, when you walk up through that bridge, you're literally saturated with these images of that time, you know, from the thirties. And, you know, we were lucky enough to get contributions from about 130 families all over the UK. With all the images that were sent to me, I actually placed on the bridge in a sort of chronological order. So when you go from sea to land, you kind of get a feel of how, you know, how time changes. In a sense, I kind of, um, for me as an artist, there isn't very many records or structural go-to places for the Windrush story. Mm. You know, I, I've grown up, I've always seen that images of back of the white boat, but I've never, I've always wondered where it was, you know, where was this white boat? And then I learned it was at Tilbury, 
And when I learned this bridge was available, to me, that was like, oh my goodness, how could I, no one have done anything here? It's very rare as an artist, you get to place an artwork in the, in the actual place where an event actually happened. Normally you, you, you're, you're sort of describing it from a distance or you're making an interpretation of it in, on a canvas in a studio. But how often do you get an opportunity to place an artwork in the actual place where those citizens literally walked and traveled and transferred into Britain? It was, it was just such a gift. As you say, being an artist to be able to put your work in such a historically significant place that, that is all still original, effectively there um from that time when you were working on that piece you were standing on that walkway uh, and and you were creating that artwork how did it make you feel because uh, it must have oh. you know given you shivers up your back surely oh I can't i mean it was i can't describe it it was it was almost as if if you can uh, if you could you can remember the the bridge is anchored to a jetty the jetty is rising so the bridge isn't actually it's not static it's actually rising and falling with the tide but as it rises, it bangs, it, 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 sh- it shudders, it crashes. Ever so often, there's an, and you think, what's that noise? It's literally the, the terms actually making a bridge rise and making a bridge fall. And as I was working on the bridge, you know, and we were installing the piece, it was, it, those were the noises you heard. And we had, there was actually a cruise liner in situ well, because of COVID. And so you had this huge boat there as, as a backdrop to when we were installing. So you just got the feel of, oh my goodness, this is how my ancestors would have felt. They would have felt, um, they would have felt almost intimidated. Remember Tilbury was the, the Heathrow airport of Britain. It was a place where you entered and left Britain. Everyone came by boat or left by boat. Very rarely, no one left by plane. Tilbury was a place where the British community, they left to go to the Australia, the 10 pound palms. It was, there was four boats, always about four to five boats, always in or out, going out. It was like a, you know, Paddington station for ships in a sense. That's how, that's how I can describe it. So now it's quite de- desolate. It's quite deserted, but you still feel those ghosts around in that, in that situation. You still feel the ghosts are quite pr- uh, present there. And um, it's quite sad in a sense, because that is quite a significant, historical, important part of British history, that because of various transport decisions, whatever, it's been neglected a lot. But it's, in a sense, it's still it's still a working port. So if you're lucky enough to arrive when there's a boat there, you get a feeling of, this is how it felt, you know. Um, I, I don't know, as, as a 20-year-old, you know, if you see, talk to 20 or 22-year-olds, you know, you say, look, you're going to travel across the world, you're going to pick up all the belongings you've ever owned in your life, you're going to put it in a suitcase, you're going to dress in your best, and you're just going to travel for 20 days across the sea, and you don't know what's going to happen when you arrive. You haven't got, you've only got a few pounds in your pocket. And, you know, you know, would you make that journey? I mean, it's like on, based on a dream and of a, of a, on a promise of possibility of a motherland, you know, help, helping the motherland and getting a job and doing better for your family. I don't know. There were there were very brave young young people. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, my parents as part of that generation, and I, it makes me proud and makes me makes me so. Um, I feel you know it's it's in, it's inspiring for me as an artist. It helps me when I challenge myself and move forward with my work. I, I always use that their lives as a template to how I how, how I engage my life and how I move forward. As you say, as you as you walk up that walkway, uh, which I, as I say I did a a couple of weeks ago, and you see the images of of uh, the people disembarking from from the boat, uh, and and indeed there are some images, isn't there, of of the walkways and the gangplanks as as people are getting off the Emperor Windrush. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you get a sense of the the nervousness, perhaps, and the excitement that that, that they had. And what I quite liked when walking up there is that. 
as you walked, there, there is so many images that you've put along there on the panes of glass that it's a little bit overwhelming in the sense of how, because of the length of the bridge as, as well. But as you walk along, so the odd image just catches the corner of your eye and it mm. just makes you stop and look at it. How, how did you actually get the images onto the glass? Is, uh, are they painted oh, or printed? I, I, can't, I, I can't say. I can't say. You I'm can't reveal not. the magic. <laughs> I, I can't reveal the magic. No, no, no. Uh, but, it's, like the candle, it's, like, it's like the, you know, that the, the flea circus or the, you know, you just don't, it's, it's, it's just the whole idea is I want people to just experience it, to feel as though, how did it, because people always ask me that question and I say, well, <laughs> it's just there. And I yeah. want you to feel it, how these images just appear and just experience them. And, um, and you know, if you look very closely, you can see, but it's, 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 we, we've done it in the sense that We've put it on not to disturb, you know, now there's cobwebs in place. Now there's there's um, some of the bridges broken away here and there. And recently the bridge was was attacked, actually. Um, so you have some broken panes of glass now. But um, it's a sense of um, that's what I mean. It, that the idea is as an artist, I like to do it. They call it an intervention into a, in the, into a, a structure or into a, a, a space. And that intervention is, is is something where I want you as a, a viewer to just come and walk through, even if you don't know anything about Windrush, even if you don't know anything about Black British history or the, the whole stories behind it. Um, I've, I've gone up there because I've recorded it on several occasions and I've seen people just walk down and just, it, oh, the, it, just look at the fashion, just look at the clothing. They're thinking, oh, didn't we dr- used to dress so well those days? And, you know, so you get a feeling of time passes in, in our lives so quickly, especially today. Mm. And with the internet, mobile phones, we're all constantly walking around, bumping into, into each other with these mobile fr- phones in front of our faces, trying to get to places. Not very often we actually look around ourselves and look at other things, you know, and the whole idea about my work some this particular work is that it, it it's 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 asking you to stop and look at other stuff other than a te- piece of technology mm. look at the windows look at the images and some of the images if you look at some of the windows they have they have um they've got qr codes on them so you can actually get your mobile phone out and get a qr code which we're all used to using now because of covid and uh, you can get a, you can listen to some of the stories as well and take them home with you and listen at home. The sound, there's about 22 sound windows. So you get a chance to listen, walk, have a conversation, bring it home, you know, you know, bring your, young, your children, your, your friends, whatever. The idea is that you just get, from, from that moment you take that journey, from that, 50, that 55 metre journey from one end of, end of the bridge to the other, the idea is that it just you're just literally for that moment, for that five, 10 minutes it takes you to walk over that bridge, that you're somewhere else. You're in another time. You're in another, you're having another type of conversation. And um, we don't know when that these images may be, we, we're taking them off because the way I've put them on the bridge, in order to do it, I had to use a certain type of vinyl. I said vinyl, so I've, got to, I've revealed a secret already. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be there a little while, and um, and um, we'll see how it goes. We, we'll try and ensure that it stays there as long as possible. It depends on the audience, and depends on our the the, the, the feedback has been really positive so far. So um, we'll see how it how it lasts. But uh, as an installation artist, when I install these works, I don't take them off. So they have to weather off and must um even if the bridge the bridge may not be here for that much longer anyway so it's a sense of i'm hopefully it will be but you know it's structure it's wood it's metal the metal rust wood rots but while it's there i think it's important that these statements and these images are out there for us to all to enjoy and and um you know um contemplate Mm. and you certainly do that when when you walk up the, the the walkway Time has uh, beaten us, I'm afraid. Oh, I, I mean, okay. we, could, we could talk forever, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. um, Artist Steve Wright, thank you ever so much for, for joining me here on Essex by the Sea. Can I say one more thing? Can we just, if you want to have a look, um, just go to evewrightarts.org. Brilliant, thank you. Don't forget, you can follow Essex by the Sea on social media, and now you can listen in even more places by just asking Alexa to play Essex by the Sea podcast. Until next time, thanks very much for listening.